All right, so here's the question that's gonna to frame today's video. I'm having a look at Magia, Magia 8. Magia is one of those weird distributions in my mind, and it could just be me, but a distribution like Magia, their releases roll around every so often, not quite on the same TikTok cadence that Fedora and Ubuntu and others release on. Their underpinnings are quite up to date, as we'll see in this video, the desktop environment is also relatively up to date, but the system management tools, the look and feel, and other parts of this system don't feel like they've significantly changed since Mandriva's glory days. The question I find myself asking is who is this distribution for? Is it only for Mandriva diehards from yesteryear? In which case, I guess that's a good thing. Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gents. And uh, I'm, I do kind of make it sound as if Magia has not been doing anything uh, over the last few years. And that's not true. They, they have been changing and innovating under the hood. The desktop environments continue to roll on through. I believe the uh, GNOME version that we're running here is 3.38.3, which is about as up to date as you can get with GNOME at the moment without going full GNOME 40, which it isn't even out yet. And the GNOME desktop itself, along with the KDE Plasma desktop and others that they have available, are all running at their latest versions. Also, the Linux kernel 5.10 is present here. And uh, under the hood, as Magia has matured as an independent project that was once upon a time a fork of Mandriva back in, I believe, 2011. Since then, Magia has gone on to uh, both embrace the DNF package management system, which is uh, well known in the world of Fedora. And while they encourage DNF as the package manager that you should use by default, they also have the URPMI package manager available as well. Now, the fascinating thing to me is that in a lot of ways, this distribution seems to bridge or want to bridge the gap between its legacy, which is in Mandriva and a lot of the Drake uh, configuration tools that just by virtue of their name signify just how old some of these tools are. Thinking of Drake Conf, uh, the Mandrake Control Center, and uh, a lot of other tools that have been uh, around for a long, long time. Um, however, at the, while juggling with one foot on the legacy of Mandriva and Mandrake before that, they also have up-to-date package managers. They have relatively up-to-date builds available for ARM architecture. And it does make me wonder who their target audience is. They have a relatively generic mission statement here on their homepage, which, that, which is that is a community-based project supported by a nonprofit organization. And their mission is to build great tools for people. That's very similar to Microsoft's mission, for example. Uh, there you go, started in September of 2010 as a fork of Mandriva, and uh, they've had seven stable releases up to this point, releasing more or less each year. So with Magia 8, does it bring anything truly unique to the table? Or, like I asked at the start, is this more about giving Mandrake users who came up or grew up on Mandrake Linux or even Mandriva Linux uh, a safe place to call home. Well, first of all, let's have a quick peek in the release notes of Magia 8, just to get a bird's eye view of what has changed in this distribution. A lot of work goes into each of these releases. And surprisingly enough, the team actually does a really bang up job of uh, relating all of those changes in quite a bit of detail to the end user. Um, they detail some of the changes that they're making in how the operating system is packaged in what kind of media is released for each um, version of Magia. Magia also details the changes that they're making in terms of different repositories. They've always had a philosophy of having core open source software available in one repository and separating it from, uh, from proprietary uh, or non-free software. And then also software that's stuck somewhere in the middle due to patenting information or due to licensing restrictions, they put somewhere in the middle uh, and they call that one tainted. 
Uh, they've also given some information around 32-bit uh, depreciating. So you can enable them if you're wanting to install things like Steam. And basically then they've just gone on and detailed some of the things that they have done to uh, fix regressions essentially since Magia 7. Python 2 is mostly gone. Uh, they're using more efficient compression for quicker install times, which I can attest to. And they have some install images for ARM, which is all good and well. It seems like a lot of Linux projects are doing that these days. They've standardized a little bit of their, uh, of their application metadata management so that the package metadata that comes from their repositories, uh, such as uh, what the version number is, uh, what the description of the application is, can be read properly by all of the uh, package management uh, pieces of software that are on the front end these days, things like uh, GNOME software and Plasma Discover and that kind of thing. And they've got, like I mentioned before, they have DNF version 4.6 available in Magia 8 alongside the URPMI. I don't really know how you say that succinctly uh, as an alternative for your terminal package management. So apart from that, it's mostly uh, around hardware support that is brought by the Linux uh, kernel and up-to-date drivers and so forth and so on. There's nothing really that stands out to me as uh, particularly new or innovative or unique to Magia. So then that begs the question, well, what does Magia bring to the table? Well, most of it does boil down to the tools that Magia has been known for for years, uh, Magia Control Center being one of them. Uh, this control center deals with all of the admin level system stuff that goes on on your system. Now, honestly, at this point, you could pause the video and go watch a video that I made about Magia years ago, and I'd still be saying the same thing. The icons have changed a little bit, the background artwork has changed a little bit, but the tool itself remains relatively consistent. Now, I do believe that at some point along the journey, it has been rewritten in more up-to-date, uh, using more up-to-date widget set, uh, but it still remains the same set of tools that we're used to seeing. That is to say that it's not a bad set of tools. It's very similar to something like Yast over on OpenSUSE. Uh, but like OpenSUSE, this is not really the way that a lot of people manage their systems anymore. We don't tend to look for a central admin control panel for, uh, for effective management of all of our deployed systems. We usually just jump straight to whatever the desktop environments system settings is. In this case, GNOME has a fairly comprehensive list of settings for their desktop. And the fact that we have these split across two different settings apps is confusing, unless that's the way you're used to doing things, I suppose. Now, what is interesting to me is that uh, with these settings, I can, for example, uh, add a printer here from GNOME printers. Uh, but also there are options here in the Magia Control Center to set up printers. And I don't, I'm not convinced as to which one is better. Uh, does it depend on the desktop environment that you're running? If I add a printer in Magia Control Center, does it add it into the GNOME printers uh, dialog as well? I don't know. Is it doubling up? Is it regression? I don't think so necessarily because this seems to hold true no matter what desktop environment you're running. Configuring, configuring 3D effects. Does anybody remember the last time they did that? Apparently you can enable Compiz Fusion. Don't know what happens if I select that. Well, let's have a look. It wants to install Compiz. Fair enough. You can configure your network connection like a proxy or a VPN or, and again, some of this stuff is helpful if you want to set it system wide, irrespective of desktop environment. Managing, adding, removing fonts, importing Windows fonts. Seems fun enough. Importing Windows documents and settings also could be helpful for people that are switching over. But if you were switching from Windows, I probably wouldn't be recommending Magia as a jumping off point. Uh, now, there's a few issues that I have with how Magia ships out of the box. Uh, and while they have a great welcome screen, which I think is a relatively recent development, at least in its current state, um, I think this has been around for the last two Magia releases. I could be wrong on that point though. Um, it has integrated all the things like uh, which media sources it's drawing from, so the repositories, how the system updates, uh, what the uh, control center covers, and it does have a slightly curated list 
of, um, of software that you can install as well. Um, it also gives you a couple of helpful suggestions with package management, as in GUI tools for package management, whether that's DNF Dragora or RPM Drake. RPM Drake being the original Mandrake tool used for managing packages. Um, and then they have a helpful little, um, uh, I guess, curated list of uh, applications that you can install right here from the welcome tool. Um, I think they've done a pretty good job uh, with being able to bundle this much stuff into a welcome app. Um, it's very similar to what Ubuntu Mate does with its software boutique. Gives you some quick information about your system and then links to documentation, donations, that kind of thing. So overall it's functional, but that's kind of the feeling that I get with Magia over the long haul. Magia is functional, doesn't really have much in the way of personality or strong project identity. It, it just, it exists and it will, I guess, continue to exist. The question for me remains unanswered though. Who is this distribution for? Let me know if I'm missing something significant from the Magia project or indeed from the way that Mandrake and Mandriva legacy handled things back in the day. In my mind, there's a reason that those projects wrapped up in the way that they did. And that's because other projects found quicker, more efficient, less resource hungry ways to do things. Um, and while Magia continues to embrace the latest open source technology, whether that's uh, in the Linux kernel, whether that's in uh, sys adopting system D when that came along, whether it's adopting DNF as an alternative package manager and keeping that up to date. Um, there's a lot of technical um, agility that's seen underneath Magia. And it seems to keep up to date just fine with desktop environments. And it puts out relatively vanilla versions of the desktop, including the software that should come standard on that desktop. As you can see here in the GNOME version, there is plenty of standard GNOME software that's installed here by default, which is great to see. However, the things that really matter to a lot of Linux users, things like out of the box support for uh, universal packaging systems, whether that's Flatpak or Snap or uh, app images, uh, is a little bit touch and go. And it's not completely obvious how you would add those things as there's no options in the Magia Control Center to configure those things. And they're definitely not configured out of the box. That plus a rather archaic uh, installer that has multiple phases as you boot uh, through the install cycle leaves a very nostalgic taste in my mouth. Back in a time where Linux distros came on the front of uh, magazine DVDs, at least they did for me. And Mandriva was definitely one of those along with OpenSUSE and other distributions that still hold a central management tool as their main calling card for the operating system. Is it enough? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I've got a deep dive coming up for KDE Plasma 5.21. Um, I don't know if this will make a whole lot of sense, but as you can see, it's what I'm using for the host system right now. And I'm set up, I've moved in and uh, I am enjoying myself profoundly more than I ever have with KDE Plasma. So that is going to be coming to a subscription box near you. Hit the like button and uh, check the notification bell so that you know when that drops. In the meantime, enjoy your Linux, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.